<laughs> Hello. <laughs> Time for what's up Wednesday. <laughs> oh, look at. <laughs> okay, maybe it's not much to look at, but you can look at it because look at the progress I have made. <laughs> oh, I have a sticky note on my camera that says introduce yourself. Uh, because I always forget to do that. Um, sorry, something just jumped out of in front of my screen. There we go. Hello, everybody. I'm Tracy, your friendly neighborhood paper pusher. I have been working on the technology, as you can tell, because yes, you can see my desk. You can see my screen. You can't see that I also have an iPad going because I'm trying to see if it's actually working like I think it's supposed to, because there's a fair good delay here which should make things very interesting this evening. Because as my son tells me, just keep going. The people out in watching you won't know the difference that you've already done that a minute ago. But I have yet to figure out quite how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna handle comments. Cause I can't watch the Facebook stream cause it's offset too much by what I'm doing and <laughs> all I can do to focus on the present, let alone the minute and a half ago at the same time. Um, but I can't, I cannot get to, uh, cannot figure out how to get the comments to show up. Oh, just a minute. Swipe left. That's right. I don't know left. Okay. <laughs> Look at me go. I got three, three, three devices going now. So hello, Nicole and Bernice. Um, this is very exciting for me. Um, I've had, oh, I've had so much trouble with things lately. I could barely get anything done this weekend because my Microsoft password was possibly corrupted, but not totally. But it still meant I had to change it, which meant every time I touched something, it told me I had the wrong password. Uh, on the upside, I just realized I have closed captioning and I didn't even try. So maybe the gods are just saying, hey, let's give Tracy a break. <laughs> okay, so I do need my uh oh there we go i don't know how to keep them going there um i do need a little bit of help though because i wanted to show some pictures and i figure i can share my screen but i can't tell what you guys see oh look at that i'm not as far behind as i thought i was so let's see i did mention oh would you oh my I'm just so impressed. I'm impressed with technology. And yes, I will admit, I'm super impressed with myself at this point for figuring it out. Um, oh, yay. Oh, look. Hello, Kathy. Or Nicole's mom. <laughs> okay, guys, this is... Woo! <laughs> this is like, super exciting for me. I, I did take a bit of a slow start to the summer. I haven't had a summer off in over 30 years. So I thought I could take some time off and I did virtually nothing. And then I went hardcore and I did everything and then I could barely move because my back hurt so bad. So then I thought I got to pace myself. But with all this new time on my hands, all these, I have so many ideas and all the things that I wanted to do. And so I just started them all. I didn't finish any of them. I just started them all. So I finally, about a week ago, decided I have got to start finishing things, not just starting all the things I haven't had time to do before. And so I went back to the beginning and thought, I will conquer technology. It may be the death of me, but I will conquer technology. And the fact that I am as far as I am, and that my IT department is currently in the basement, he's not even here helping me right now. It's just so exciting for me. All right. How about we get on track and do something that maybe is exciting for you and not just for me. So um, yeah, I'm on my iPad is where I'm trying to read comments. Oh, look at you go. But every time I uh, like don't touch the screen every three seconds, the comments go away. So I haven't quite mastered that yet, obviously. It's gonna be a permanent way to get those to stay on in the meantime. All right, folks, the Christmas kit is out now. And I was supposed to do I was supposed to do an order this morning and I did go check and they were they were not sold out yet. So thank God, because uh, I do have some that I have to order. But I, I got so distracted trying to make sure that this would work and picking a project to do tonight, which then went to four different things and five different things because I found something else while I was practicing something. So so I never did. So I'm still doing an order. That's the point of that whole 
squirrel moment I have an order to do tonight. So this is the Christmas kit that came out. These are the cards. You get eight cards. There's four each of the two different designs. And because I can do this now, I'm just going to keep opening pictures and showing you. Why is that not the right picture? though? Maybe if I did that right, it'd be even better. I should, next time I'll make sure I clean up my screen and make sure there's nothing that you shouldn't see there. Um, this is all the contents, everything you need in the kit. And actually, one of the things I'm super impressed with on this kit is the, uh, you can tell every time I look down to try to find the comments because I pause. Um, this is a stamp set. So really good background stamps, but I love this. Wishing you peace, joy, and love now and throughout the coming year. That's what sold me on the kit. I like to make my own cards. I like to do kits because they're easy, but they're quick and, and I mean, stamping up designers are awesome, but, but the stamp set, that's what sold me on the kit right there. Alrighty. So that is the Christmas kit. So if anybody wants one, it will cost you, there we go. I have 18 stickies on my desk right now. Uh, if you want to order it, just order it through me and pick it up or we find some way to meet or we do the whole drop it off at the office thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. It'll cost you $30. If you want to just order a kit, have it shipped to yourself at home, pay the, the basically the $9.95 shipping, it will cost you $37.75. I would not wait because I do not think they're going to last. Um, very popular, very good to do, easy to have kit togethers. Love that catchy little term. Um, so yes, I think they might go. The other thing that I think might go very quickly, <clears throat> and I don't know, I think there's probably a story behind this picture because we never get this much information ahead of time, but is the September kit. We knew that the box, the inside of the box was marked and you can make this adorable wagon. I think I've mentioned that before. And we knew it had treat holders in it that you could either make into like a Thanksgiving theme or a Halloween theme, but to actually see this much of the kit, so these kits are $31.50 for Paper Pumpkin. You either have to subscribe by Friday at 11 or let me know by the same, well, earlier than that, I have plans Friday. Our team meeting, I've said it numerous times, I love being a demo. Cannot miss the team meeting for making, making Paper Pumpkin orders. Um, so you would actually have to let me know probably by about Friday at supper time um, and I can up my order. But are these not like some of the cutest things you've seen? So these ship about mid-September, we'd have them for, the, probably the third week of September is when paper pumpkin generally comes in. 12 pumpkins and a wheelbarrow or 12 little treat holders in a wheelbarrow. So that's the sub September paper pumpkin. Let me know if you want that one. I'm actually very excited to get to my card because it worked out better than I thought. Um, what else did I write down here? Ball cards. Oh, on Monday when I said I was going to do an experiment. <laughs> Okay, Monday was not the technology day. I started to record something and I had I had consulted with my IT department ahead of time. So I knew that I could have something playing in the background. You could watch me do it. He could sync them together, put in a few subtitles. We could do a little music. He's very good on the computer. That was obviously not genetic. And, and we could have this thing that I could show you. Yeah, two minutes in the thing stopped recording. I had no idea. I went for 65 minutes and it only recorded the first two because <laughs> we were going to like do that speed up thing too so that didn't work at all um so yeah that may not ever happen but we're going to try that again but there's nothing to post at present uh the cards turned out awesome the recording and the technology to go with it not so much so oh <laughs> see on my own note i didn't even know what i meant i wrote end august big seb so anybody whose birthday was the end of August or the beginning of September, I thought I mailed your cards like two weeks ago and I found them on a pile on my desk today when I was cleaning. So they're in the mailbox now. They were all sitting there labeled, ready to go. So they are, there we go. I thought I was going to note again. Uh, they're in the mail now. So sorry, once again, your cards are going to be late. But they're coming because I've decided I'm sending them late even if, even if. It's like two or three weeks past because it's still nice and it just stretches out the joy. So this is what I found while I was cleaning on my computer today was this card that I had saved. And as my good friends Mary will tell you, always watermark your photo because now I can't even give credit to anybody for this awesome card. And, and I liked it not just because it's trees. Yes, I like my trees, but not just because it's trees. I liked it because of the cool fold. So what I like to do... I like to look at something and go, I can do that. 
So that was today's attempt. So I am going to remember what I did here. I'll probably go back and show that later. There we go. Because um, here's how it all started. I was, I was so happy with how my card turned out and it does not have trees on it, people. That uh, it was totally worth it. I might have went a little overboard on the die cuts in the decorating, so maybe it's not a good card for making at class, but somebody's getting this card. So I just thought I would like add a few little extra things in as I go. And I can move those other way now. So this is the traditional way cards are cut, right? I was doing this earlier, my son was just laughing at me because this is how I was telling how bad the delay was on the camera. So this is a normal way the cards are cut. You cut an eight and a half by 11 and a half on the long side. Then you can make them also go landscape. Well, I like my cards to stand like this, like a tent. So when I cut my portrait orientation cards, instead of cutting them, like just turning them this way, and, and it all started because it doesn't sit as nicely this way. I mean, it works, it's fine. I started cutting them this way. So I would cut the long side of the paper. So I still can't touch the camera. So there's, there's no chance of zooming up or down or making it bigger. So this is the lengthways on the camera. But I did it because then these ones, when I haven't manhandled them, they stand up like this as well. My desk is very slippery. That's not the best example. So this is how I cut my portrait size cards. So I thought about it and I thought you can do this with any of the card bases I have cut because it is the actual fold to get the fancy fold, which I wish I could figure out how to write when you're typing out stuff because on my post when I said ooh fancy, it needs to go ooh fancy. So if anybody can figure out how to write it so it, it reads like I want it to read, like I'm saying it in my head, I'd love to know how. So anyways, this is my portrait card base. And what we're gonna do is one simple scoring. So here's a card base and we were putting one score line. And it does matter, I almost scored it backwards the first time and then you would just have a backwards card, which I like to always say, if I make a card backwards, it's for left-handed people. But I don't actually think that that would work in this case because it would just face away from you. So you wanna go from the bottom corner to the top corner and just score your card in half. That's, that's as fancy as it got. The part that took a little longer and you'll see three pieces of paper because it took me three tries. Because even when people like this one, the lady just posted a picture of a card. She didn't have any instructions or anything. But even when they post the instructions, I rarely read them. I'm more stubborn than that. I've determined I'll figure it out on my own. So this one, I had nothing to go by. So I'm just like, well, it can't be that hard. So this is your typical uh, card or layer of DSP that would go on, right? With my little one sixteenth of a border around it. So I thought, well, this is easy. I wanted to make this red front is how I started. So that, well, this is easy. I just got to cut it corner to corner. Well, first off, pay attention when you cut it, because if you cut the line in the opposite direction of the fold, it will not work. And yes, you might think, well, just turn it then. Yeah, you can turn as many times as you want. It's not fitting. The only way it fits is to flip the paper over. And this is not the side I wanted. And when you flip it over like this and put it on, I don't know if it's super obvious, but the paper's upside down, like this flower's upside down. So I could probably get away with it because I was covering it, but yeah, pay attention to which side you cut and which side is showing up because it actually does matter. So if you just cut this paper simply in half, you could, and I'm just gonna hold it because it's not glued down, you could make your card go like this and fold and your paper would go right to the edge on one side and then you'd have that nice little border on two sides. Well, I wanted border on to go. So trial number two. Let's just trim a little bit off the paper to make up for the space in the middle. <laughs> I get my hands to work. So that's what I did. So I trimmed a little bit off the middle, or off each end, I mean, and then cut it down. And this time I intentionally did it this way so I could remember it was different than that one. So paper's facing upwards. Oops, I'm moving out of the frame. Paper's facing upwards. And here we go. Only, and it's not as easy to see, but the, because your angles are not the same on the paper as it is on the card, even if I get this nice pretty border like I want all the way around, my card 
this this one is over the fold at this end and and lower than the fold. I should have used something other than white. Um, so this does not work. Okay, it does work if you're not picky. If you're me and you're super picky about everything being even, it does not work. So really, all you have to do is cut the piece of paper in half. I temporarily lost my pencil. Cut the piece of paper in half, and then go in and hold your piece of paper down so you have nice even on two sides. And then this one, see in this case, this piece of paper is, is even smaller than it needs to be here. Oh yes, sorry, that's what I figured out. Don't trim your paper first. Use the full size, the, the five and a quarter by four. And I'm actually gonna do a little blog post about this and take pictures of each of the steps because I didn't think to do that while I was making the card today. So I will have all the dimensions in that in a couple of days posted on my blog, but um, keep it at the five and a quarter by four. Don't use the trim down one, that's why this isn't working. Um, but basically you just want to cut the piece in half, line up the quarters, and then just make little pencil marks where one sixteenth will be and just trim across. Once you trim one, you can actually put it up against the other one to use it, make two new marks, boom, and cut them. So you'll have the right size. Because then when you do that, you get your nice little pieces of paper with an equal border on all the sides. And when you fold it like this, you have this nice little border. So it's not that hard, but just so when you're reading it on my little blog, you can understand that that's what I went through. So I <laughs> if you were wondering about my, is crafter math not one of the best words ever? I saw that on Patty Bennett's Instagram. Patty Bennett's one of the, the big wigs of Stampin' Up. She's a demonstrator who is currently in Stampin' Up celebrating 2 million in sales. Now she's been a demonstrator almost since the company started. I think it was like 26 years, she said. So yes, try to envision. Go to your happy place and try to envision $2 million worth of stamping supplies. Like, I mean, it would, oh, happy, happy place. Obviously she sold them all to different people, but um, anyway, so yes, she's one of the there. And she posted something on her thing that said, this is the crafter bath. Well, crafter bath, I'm loving the word crafter bath. So when I posted my picture of my crafter math from this afternoon, you may have noticed that I had all this old Valentine paper, which is retired. That's why I used it because it's retired now. So I can't really use it in current projects, but it was good because I knew it was not, it was not going to be a, hey, I'll just do this once and I'll, I'll have it figured out, no problem. Not that that doesn't sometimes happen, but that does not very often happen. So if you were wondering why this, remember, here's the problem. If I, if I was dared to touch my camera, uh, you would be able to see that I have so much stuff on my desk because I tend to just finish what I'm working on and push it back and work on the next one. But these were the cards that I was making in my failed Monday attempt. Um, and you'll notice that these are made out of the same suite of products. This is Blackberry Beauty paper. I love Blackberry Bliss, like the cardstock, but this pattern paper. Um, and so we were making a class with these. And why did they do it? Well, because it was sitting in front of me on the desk because for the last little while I've been making cards with this and I just keep pulling it forward and making cards with it. So sure enough, <laughs> tonight's card was also made with this, but I challenged myself. I decided I'm not going to, um, sorry, I just realized I should really check for comments. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not gonna use white. <laughs> That's a lot of white. I tend, I don't know why I noticed this the other day when I was cutting stuff, I tend to use a lot of white because I do like the cleanness of white. And I do tend to make my cards portrait all the time. So I'm branching out now. So I decided I wasn't gonna make white. This is the envelope. Yes, it is white, but it is the envelope. I tell a little stamp on it. So here is, how long should I tease you for? What time is it? Let's see, it's 20 after. I've made you wait 20 minutes to see what came of the crafter math. Okay, ta-da! <laughs> there is my card and it's pretty. <laughs> if I do so myself. I'm gonna try to move this slowly and see if I can make the autofocus work. So I don't tend to just cut one thing. I got a couple new stamp sets. I wanted to try out the dies. 
So yes, I cut an entire bag out of every out of fall color I had, and I cut all sorts of stuff. And I thought I'll use them. So that's why there was so much stuff on the desk. I did have a plan in mind. So we have some of this gold vellum. Uh, anyone who's known me for any length of time knows that I'm not really a fan of gold. I would take silver, brass, cast iron, anything pretty much over gold any day. But this gold vellum paper, oh my goodness, it is awesome. So there's a wreath behind it and then some leaves. This is called cinnamon cider. And I just think gingerbread and I love that paper as well. And then this. Now you notice on this card, I decided, hey, I'm going to do the paper half and half. That's also an option. And all I did was I cut the first set of paper in half and then I had a solid piece for the inside. I guess I could show you. This is how the card stands up when it's all properly done. Ta-da! <laughs> you know what else I noticed is an added bonus of making this fold. You can do it like this. <laughs> oh, it almost works. So it, it'll, it'll stand on a Facebook Live. So this is like the angle of the card. But I originally had this paper on the outside and this paper on the inside. But I couldn't decide. This was too much of this paper, but I still like this paper. But I also wanted to stamp on the inside, which you can't see it very well on the camera. You can see it much better in person. And it says, your kindness makes the world a more beautiful place to be, which is not nice. So I decided that I was going to do half and half. So I had already cut this one in half. So all I did was I used the bottom piece to template this piece and I cut it off the big piece. And you'll notice that I did not, I didn't want a gap. So I, did, I, I just left it. I just cut off the piece that I needed and I didn't trim anything else and they line up perfectly, surprisingly, but they line up perfectly. And I made my little joint there. So now I have the two different pieces. You can only see this one a little bit, but if you didn't put something there, you could see just a chunk of card stocking. That just wouldn't do. And then I just put down a few little things to go with it. So I got the, I got the effect I wanted because now I have the sort of cinnamon cider wheaty one. I have the busier one and then I have the more plain one. And I think the wreath and such showed up better against this than this, believe it or not. And then in order to keep this to stay open, um, I had originally just put this on with a glue dot because glue dots are awesome. Uh, and it, it, it only lifts it what a millimeter off the paper but it was actually enough to hold this card open but it wouldn't hold it open for very long like I think eventually it'd spring but really all you need is one little embellishment or die cut or something you could have put a label here too but I like the idea of stamping here with one dimensional underneath it and it said that just enough that it holds that in place so that's your card and then because you know maybe you want to write something on it I actually did put a piece of white on the back just so you could write on it. I did have the idea of cutting a piece of white in half and putting half on here and half on here. But if you're like me, you'd make the card first, then realize you had to write on it and then try to write with this behind you. So I thought that's not so good. This one does have one little bump, but it's minor and you can always just flip the card like this to write. So I figured, you know, if you're, if you're not on the ball like me, you'll appreciate that this is on the back where it's easy enough. You could also write everything you wanted before you stuck the piece of paper down. Uh, I guess you could stick a letter in there. But anyways, how is that? I love the sentiment grateful. I am grateful for many things. Um, and I think it, this would be, although it is very fall themed, um, it does just say, your kindness makes the world a better place. So I think you could send it for just about anything. And I will more than likely make many more of these cards because once I once I figured it out, it was a lot of fun. So I would like to send me to check for comments, but after that first time, oh, oh, I did figure it out again. Look at that. Thank you, Kim. Hello, Kim. <laughs> I can only see one comment though, and then they go away. And then sometimes I can't get them back. <laughs> okay, well, there you go, people. <laughs> I have to uh, go celebrate my victory <laughs> because this actually works. Um, I have OBS, which I don't even know what that stands for, but that's some gamer thing that my son set up for me, which is how I managed to get the picture in picture. I have Zoom. I have editing live or streaming live to Facebook. I have my iPad and I have paper. And of all of these things, paper is by far my favorite. But look at me go. I will work on having a better idea of how to get the comments where I can see them for next time. Because yes, I've lost them again. And uh, because I would love to be able to uh, react and answer your comments and answer questions if they come up. Um, 
But hey, it's not about where you are, it's about how far you've come. And holy, look how far I've come. So, <laughs> yes, I'm very proud of myself. I really should tone it down this evening, but seriously, I'm so proud of myself right now for, for, for being able to do the technology part. So there you guys go. Grateful. I've had many people help me too. There you go. I'm grateful for all the people who helped me, including my very unwilling IT department who doesn't have a choice but to help me um, to get me this far. So stay tuned. Now that I can do this, you never know what antics I might get up to. Um, I'm going to uh, have some fun on Friday night with my team, the demo team, and uh, make some cool projects. And I'm going to try to remember to post those afterwards. And I'm going to uh, be putting in some orders. So like I said, if you want any of those kits or anything else for that matter, let me know and I will put them in. And uh, oh my goodness, guys, thank you. Thank you people for showing up. I, I would name you all, but again, I can't see who you are right now. Um, and for hanging in there. And uh, yeah, have an awesome Wednesday evening. I'm going to go have a celebratory cup of tea and revel in the glory of the fact that this all worked. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Happy stamping.